Hey guys, what's up? By Zach Detron here from One Hive Gazette. Here with the next war recap video. This is the war uh, this weekend against Knights Templar. We were actually looking to do an arranged war with a different clan, but we missed the match and we got we got matched with uh, Knights Templar. It was a very good war, so definitely had a the same quality as our arranged war. Pretty even too. I think they might have had one kind of sketchy Town Hall 11 base that maybe was a little bit too low in weight. It was like a Town Hall 9 weight. But besides that, very evenly matched. And I think that uh, this is definitely a war we should have won. You can see how close it actually was when everything was said and done. That percentage there, uh, we had 96.73, they had 96.9. So a 0.13 percentage difference. That's very small. And just taking a look at what things added up to to be in this war, you can see they got the two Town Hall 11s two-starred and then left just one Town Hall 10 two-starred. Everything else was three-starred, including the Town Hall 9s. We did the exact same thing, but just the percentage on these three bases was the difference. I think ours added up for just one or two percentage less uh, than theirs uh, did. So it comes down to a few buildings. If you look at any of the attacks we had, just a few extra buildings would have made the difference. But um, nice try to everyone at Genesis. Not the best war, to be completely honest, especially by some of our Town Hall 9s. We had to do quite a few dip attacks. So it, it was definitely a tough war for some of our Town Hall 10s and 11s because the attacks were spread so thin. But we'll kind of regroup and be ready for our next close war whenever that comes. Definitely learned a few things. I had an amazing war. You guys have already heard that. I don't want to talk about that too much. But definitely a very... Uh, Big confidence boost for me as a Town Hall 10. Still adjusting to new strategies and uh, working to get my heroes maxed out sometime in the future, I guess, whenever I have time to farm, which isn't a whole lot nowadays. But anyway, um, I've kind of gone back and forth on showing dip attacks. Uh, I've done that, done that in the past, but I've also said I, I, I don't like showing dip attacks, uh, Town Hall 11s on Town Hall 10s, that is. But I am going to show it here. And the main reason is, well, first of all, I guess I should say, because I already showed my two attacks, there's not as many Town Hall uh, 10 and 11 attacks to choose from to show uh, that's part of it but also not like not every town hall 11 dip attack onto a town hall 10 is going for a three star that's true for our clan for the clans we've been facing not just in this war but in other wars it seems like nothing's a guarantee even if you're you know have that warden especially if the warden's not not maxed out that can uh, make it a little bit trickier but in general these these dip attacks are not always a sure three star and I want to show a good example of a Town Hall 11 dip attack for you Town Hall 11s out there because that's a big responsibility of the Town Hall 11s is to be able to three star the Town Hall 10s and typically fresh three star them because you don't want to have to waste a Town Hall 10 attack scouting it out and trying to three star it. So a fresh three star is huge, especially on some of these top bases. That really lightens up the workload for the Town Hall 10s. They don't even have to worry about some of the top bases, which are very tricky for a Town Hall 10 to three star. So that being said, you can see does the queen walk one thing i like about this is he used the king to funnel the miners but he doesn't just take out trash buildings he actually wall breakers the king into the base that way the king's taking out defenses and doing a better job creating the funnel keeping the miners not just in the base but in the middle of the base uh, the warden's ability was way too early and it, it occurred while the miners were underground. You never want to pop the ability while the miners are underground because they're not taking damage anyway. Typically, you want to do it when they're popping up under a giant bomb or the inferno. This would have been a good time to do it right here. Uh, so he does do that kind of early, but still he has plenty of miners. And I think miners are a safe bet if you can use a huge group of them and maybe do a queen walk or a uh, bowl or kill squad or something to go along with it. Uh, that's a very effective strategy for Town Hall 11's dipping down. Uh, it does end up being very close here, not because of the defenses left up, but there is a troll test that all the way in the corner over here. And that is something that I think Town Hall 10's, especially the top Town Hall 10's should do. Because when you think about it, um, the top Town Hall 10 bases are typically going to try to be fresh 3-starred by a Town Hall 11, but you can effectively waste a Town Hall 11 attack if you can get them with a Troll Tesla. Uh, it came down to about 1 second left. Uh, if you saw the clock at the beginning, it started at 2.59 was when he deployed his first troop. So it was so close, and that can be a tricky way to 
to uh, take away one of their Town Hall 11 attacks. Not de not the nicest thing to do, but definitely all part of warfare. So uh, I would recommend that for some top Town Hall 10 bases. If you think that the other clan might just try to dip down and fresh 3-star you with a Town Hall 11 attack, definitely consider that. Um, so yeah, moving on, I'm going to show the other Town Hall 10 3-star other than my own. Uh, just one of them here. That's, uh, that's the only other one we had. It's by the Arrow. And... Awesome attack, because this base I'm sure you guys see a lot. This seems to be a common base design, um, or something similar to it. There's different kind of variations of it. Uh, that that free spell was a little bit early, or a little bit late, rather. If the Inferno is going down and the freeze still lasts for another few seconds, you know it's been too late on your freeze. You want that free spell to wear off as soon as as the bowlers are taking it out that way you get the full value of it because the, the inferno is the main thing you're freezing that's why you're dropping the freeze it's not for teslas or anything like that the main thing you're freezing is that inferno especially on a mass bowler attack so you want that inferno frozen for the entire time uh, that it's still alive you don't want it to be frozen after it's already been destroyed because that way you're just kind of wasting the last few seconds of your free spell so get it down a little bit earlier error on the early side rather than the late side i guess is what i'm saying I get the freeze down earlier, but he gets that second Inferno. That jump spell was close, but I don't think you can get the six tile, or rather the eight tile jump, whatever you call it, where there's six tiles between the walls, eight tiles from one wall to the other, whatever that you call that jump span. Uh, you just can't quite do that with a jump spell. I think only the Earthquake spell can span that far. It just has a little more reach than the than the jump spell does for whatever reason. That's been debated, but personally, I think from what I've seen, the Earthquake spell can reach just a little bit farther. Uh, but the arrow, because he got that Inferno Tower taken out, his troops are gonna be able to kind of fight their way through the rest of this base. There is that Tesla farm at the bottom, but he has just enough uh, firepower to get through it. We'll go ahead and fast forward a little bit. Uh, right here, his troops beat through the wall. He kind of drops that poison spell in anticipation. Uh, it gets really close right here. You can see that the, the bowlers are going down very quickly with nothing to tank for them. Just the queen to sit back behind. Only a level 30 queen and a level 30 king. So definitely a nice three star with these, you know, Town Hall 9 level heroes really. Max for Town Hall 9. So awesome stuff there to the arrow. Let's move on to some Town Hall 9 action. Um, we have Fahim going in here with a queen walk, uh, queen walk hobo attack. Yeah, queen walk hobo. Uh, this was an awesome attack. He kind of overpowered the space. These compact bases are good for the the uh, hobo attacks because the golems soak up all that damage. Typically, the pathing is a little bit more predictable. You can kind of guide them through the base with the jump spells. And you can ensure the bowlers will get great value because there's almost always something uh, in the in the area of their second bounce. So you get the double bounce, especially when they're raged up. That's a whole lot of DPS behind those golems, along with their heroes, which uh, in Fahim's case are 30-30, which definitely doesn't hurt. So it does kind of a little queen walk right here, just getting in there, getting some value. And I think he might lure the CC troops, or maybe not. I can't remember if he lures the CC troops or not. Drops down a golem. So really the healers are playing a very small role, but they're going to peel off and heal other things as well. So it's not just about the queen walk. It's about having those healers for most of the attack. A few of them will go down to that air defense. Uh, a little bit unlucky right here. Or maybe not. Was that a different attack? No, yeah, right here, the queen's aggro goes onto those skellies. So he loses like one healer, but she'll retarget back onto that air defense and take it out before it does too much damage. And then as soon as that cannon goes down, she'll follow the king and the golems and the boulders into the base. Right there, the CC troops come out, just poisons. And I like that heal, even though he has the healers. Um, for giant bombs, for CC troops, the heal is a little bit more effective. It's a little bit more reliable as far as healing up your bowlers uh, because they are very important to your attack. So the heal spell is definitely good rather than healing the hogs, which honestly, healing hogs on these type of attacks aren't that important. The hogs can kind of fend for themselves. They have enough HP uh, just for clearing out the outside of the base. Now, if you want them to actually go through the base and deal with giant bombs, that's a different story. But if you're just using them to flank a few defenses on the outside of the base, yeah, typically you can just use, uh, you don't have to use a heal spell. Maybe you use extra spells on your bowlers and your kill squad, which is more important to the attack. The hogs are kind of just the, the, uh, 
the sideshow in a way. So moving on, we have two more attacks to look at, and I am saving a few attacks for some more specific videos, so you guys will see what I mean over the next few days uh, for some different specific tutorials and attack strategy type videos, because there was some cool different combinations and compositions in this war that I definitely want to show to you guys. So be looking for that, but we have two more attacks just for this war recap. Um, we're looking at Nev, and he goes ahead and lures out the CC troops with the balloons now he was trying to get that um wizard tower with the two balloons as well for a nice trade there you can see he lures everything to the top with an archer tower drops in that balloon but it doesn't get the wizard tower either so at this point he makes a good decision leaves that wizard tower alone he's already wasted three balloons on it or i shouldn't say wasted they, they did get the cc lure but at this point there's no there's no reason to try to use more balloons he just kind of accepts the uh the wizard tower is going to be up for a little bit longer drops the queen down takes out the cc troops and from here it's all air um, I like one thing to notice about this attack as it happens is he's using balloons to lure out the CC and you might wonder why that's not the most efficient way to do it. The reason for using balloons to lure out the CC is he's only worried about air targeting troops inside the clan castle because the only troops entering the base in this attack are going to be uh, air troops. The queen, the king are not going to be in range of the CC. Now, I think the queen actually might go in range. That's not part of the plan, but she does. I think he expected her to go down before that. Uh, this point. But she does lure the CC troops. A few barbarians run out. But even though the barbarians came out, as soon as the, uh, the queen goes down... They run over to the king, and the lava pups take them out anyway, so no issue there. But that's what I really like. He's not luring out too much. Like, if there was a golem or a lava hound in there, those two balloons wouldn't have lured it out. And had the plan gone to plan, the the queen never would have aggroed the CC, and the, the clan castle just never would have been an issue. So, so think about doing that. If you can manage to not have your queen or your king or any ground troops lure the CC... All you have to worry about is using a few balloons or some minions or whatever to lure out the CC, to lure out the air troops, and that way you might be able to get away with not having to deal with some Valks or a Lava Hound or a Golem or any other air or non-air targeting troops, which are common in clan castles. There's probably more non-targeting air troops uh, than there is uh, air targeting troops. I guess there's baby dragons and wizards, but besides that, there's not a whole lot. So anyway didn't get to talk that much about the attack but i just wanted to talk a little bit about that one principle for luring out the cc hopefully that makes sense for you guys and allows you to have a little bit more creativity when planning your air attacks especially penta or mass balloon mass lava hound attacks like that last one so one more attack for you guys um before i fall asleep here this is rich and he's doing a attack that i think is is very effective on spread out bases. This one also has lower level point defense, which to be honest, definitely doesn't hurt. Uh, only having some Town Hall 8 level Archer Towers is never a bad thing, uh, especially when you're doing a Queen Walk and stuff like that. But in general, when the point defense is spread out, look to do a Queen Charge, because typically there's a nice compartment that has everything very spread out so the Queen can take on defenses one at a time. And if you're getting multiple defenses taken out but not having to use your queen's ability or use many rages and stuff on her and she gets great value look to just to do that to enter the queen into the base at a point where she's not going to have to have that much stuff to help heal her up but she'll get a lot of great value which is the case on the 12 o'clock compartment where we will enter the queen now he goes ahead and lures out the golem uh, it'll take a while to walk over there and the queen will engage it now one thing he decided to do and i'm not sure if i agree with this decision or not it's kind of up for you guys to decide for yourself but he rages up the queen not because she's taking damage but because he wants her to get through that golem a little bit faster um, I'm still kind of not sure about that. It works out fine for this attack, but sometimes that rage is better needed uh, when she starts taking damage or for a different part of the attack for your kill squad. I'm a little bit skepti skeptical about just using a rage uh, for the sole purpose of making her speed up her damage a little bit faster, but I don't know. It's up for you guys to decide if you think that's effective or not in your attacks. Anyway, the queen keeps moving forward, gets great value. The Valks, the bowlers come in, and the pathing doesn't have to be perfectly predictable. His Valks will kind of go crazy. They'll leave the base. 
all different kinds of stuff, but as long as they're kind of staying together, they're getting the value of the heal spells, they can overpower the base. And like I said at the beginning, especially these spread out bases, they're great for a queen walk Valk attack. So look to do that. Rich does a great job here. I'll go ahead and fast forward because it's just Valks making their way through the base at this point under a few heal spells. Uh, still has the king's ability, still has the queen's ability. She got great value. Her healers are down, but she still has her ability and is at full health. Uh, so has a heal spell to swag, it looks like, and crushes this base. Awesome attack to Rich. Hope you guys liked the recap. Uh, hope you liked all the attacks. Maybe you guys can learn something from this. So let me know what you think in the comments below. And like I said earlier, I'm going to have some more specific videos on different attacks we saw because we saw some very interesting techniques in this in this uh, war. And I definitely want to make separate videos on those. So be looking for that over the next few days. And I'll see you guys in those videos uh, over the next few days. Bisect the trend out.